Alice Munro. Alice Ann Munro is a Canadian author writing in English. Munro's work has been described as having revolutionized the architecture of the short stories, especially in its tendency to move forward and backward in time. Her stories embed more than announce, reveal more than parade. Munro's fiction is most often set in her native Huron County in southwestern Ontario. Her stories explore human complexities in an uncomplicated prose style. Munro's writing has established her as one of our greatest contemporary writers of fiction, or, as Cynthia Ozick put it, our Chekhov. Awarded the 2013 Nobel Prize in Literature for her work as Master of the Contemporary Short Story, and the 2009 Man Booker International Prize for her lifetime body of work, she is also a three-time winner of Canada's Governor General's Award for Fiction. Life and Work Early Life Monroe was born Alice Ann Laidlaw in Wingham, Ontario. Her father, Robert Eric Laidlaw, was a false and Ming farmer, and her mother, Anne Clark Laidlaw, née Chemney, was a schoolteacher. Monroe began writing as a teenager, publishing her first story, The Dimensions of a Shadow, in 1950 while studying English and journalism at the University of Western Ontario under a two-year scholarship. During this period she worked as a waitress, a tobacco picker, and a library clerk. In 1951, she left the university, where she had been majoring in English since 1949, to marry fellow student James Monroe. They moved to Dundarav, West Vancouver, for James's job in a department store. In 1963, the couple moved to Victoria, where they opened Monroe's Books, which still operates. Career Monroe's highly acclaimed first collection of stories, Dance of the Happy Shades, 1968 won the Governor General's Award, Canada's highest literary prize. That success was followed by Lives of Girls and Women, 1971, a collection of interlinked stories. In 1978, Monroe's collection of interlinked stories Who Do You Think You Are? was published, titled The Beggar Maid, Stories of Flo and Rose in the United States. This book earned Monroe a second Governor General's Literary Award. From 1979 to 1982, she toured Australia, China and Scandinavia for public appearances and readings. In 1980 Monroe held the position of writer-in-residence at both the University of British Columbia and the University of Queensland. In 2006, Monroe's story The Bear Came Over the Mountain was adapted for the screen and directed by Sarah Polly as Away From Her, starring Julie Christie and Gordon Pinsent. Since the 1980s, Monroe has published a short story collection at least once every four years, most recently in 2001, 2004, 2006, 2009, and 2012. First versions of Monroe's stories have appeared in journals such as The New Yorker, The Atlantic Monthly, Grand Street, Harper's Magazine, Mademoiselle, and The Paris Review. Her collections have been translated into 13 languages. On October 10, 2013, Monroe was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature, cited as a master of the contemporary short story. She is the first Canadian and the 13th woman to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature. Monroe is noted for her longtime association with editor and publisher Douglas Gibson. When Gibson left Macmillan of Canada in 1986 to launch his own Douglas Gibson Books imprint at McClelland and Stewart, Monroe returned the advance that Macmillan had already paid her for the progress of love so that she could follow Gibson to the new company. Monroe and Gibson have retained their professional association ever since. When Gibson published his own memoirs in 2011, Monroe wrote the introduction, and to this day Gibson often makes public appearances on Monroe's behalf when her health prevents her from appearing personally. Almost 20 of Monroe's works have been made available for free on the web. However, in most cases these are the first versions only. From the period before 2003, 16 stories have been included in Monroe's own compilations more than twice, with two of her works scoring even four republications, carried away in hateship, friendship, courtship, loveship, marriage. Writing Many of Monroe's stories are set in Huron County, Ontario. Her strong regional focus is one of the features of her fiction. 
another is the omniscient narrator who serves to make sense of the world. Many compare Monroe's small town settings to writers from the rural south of the United States. As in the works of William Faulkner and Flannery O'Connor, her characters often confront deep-rooted customs and traditions, but the reaction of Monroe's characters is generally less intense than their southern counterparts. Her male characters tend to capture the essence of the everyman, while her female characters are more complex. Much of Monroe's work exemplifies the literary genre known as Southern Ontario Gothic. Monroe's work is often compared with the great short story writers. In her stories, as in Chekhov's, plot is secondary and little happens. As with Chekhov, Garen Holcomb notes, all is based on the epiphanic moment, the sudden enlightenment, the concise, subtle, revelatory detail. Monroe's work deals with love and work, and the failings of both. She shares Chekhov's obsession with time and her much lamented inability to delay or prevent its relentless movement forward. Monroe's short novels have also been compared to those of the Sardinian poet and writer Grazia Deleta, also a Nobel Prize winner, in 1926. A frequent theme of her work, particularly evident in her early stories, has been the dilemmas of a girl coming of age and coming to terms with her family in the small town she grew up in. In recent works such as Hateship, Friendship, Courtship, Loveship, Marriage, 2001, and Runaway, 2004, she has shifted her focus to the travails of middle age, of women alone, and of the elderly. It is a mark of her style for characters to experience a revelation that sheds light on, and gives meaning to, an event. Monroe's prose reveals the ambiguities of life, ironic and serious at the same time, mottos of godliness and honor and flaming bigotry, special, useless knowledge, tones of trill and happy outrage, the bad taste, the heartlessness, the joy of it. Her style places the fantastic next to the ordinary, with each undercutting the other in ways that simply and effortlessly evoke life. As Robert Thacker has it, Many critics have asserted that Monroe's stories often have the emotional and literary depth of novels. Some have asked whether Monroe actually writes short stories or novels. Alex Keegan, writing in Eclectica, gave a simple answer, who cares? In most Monroe's stories there is as much as in many novels. Research on Monroe's work has been undertaken since the early 1970s, with the first PhD thesis published in 1972. The first book-length volume collecting the papers presented at the University of Waterloo First Conference on her over was published in 1984, The Art of Alice Munro, Saying the Unsible. Indiana, 2003-2004, The Journal Open Letter. Canadian Quarterly Review of Writing and Sources published 14 contributions on Munro's work, in Autumn 2010 The Journal of the Short Story in English, JSSE. Slash Les Cares de la Nouvelle dedicated a special issue to Monroe, and in May 2012 an issue of the journal narrative focused on a single story by Monroe, Passion, 2004, with an introduction, a summary of the story, and five essays of analysis. Creating New Versions Alice Monroe publishes variant versions of her stories, and sometimes within a short span of time. Among the latter, her work Save the Reaper and Passion came out in two different versions in the same year, in 1998 and 2004 respectively. At the other end of the scale, two stories were republished in a variant version about 30 years later, Home, 1974-2006, and Wood, 1980-2009. Anne Close and Lisa Dickler Awana reported in 2006 that Monroe had not wanted to rewrite The Galleys of Runaway, 2004, no, because I'll rewrite the stories. In their symposium contribution and appreciation of Alice Munro they say that of her story powers, for example, Munro did eight versions in all. Awana writes that what is a good example of how Munro, being a Tala self-editor, rewrites and revises a story, in this case returning to it for a second publication nearly 30 years later. In this case, Awana says, Munro revised characterizations, themes and perspectives, as well as rhythmic syllables, a conjunction or a punctuation mark. The characters change too. Inferring from the perspective they take on things, they are middle age in 1980, and in 2009 they are older. Awana perceives a heightened lyricism brought about not least by the poetic precision of the revision undertaken by the author. 
The 2009 version is made up of eight sections instead of three in 1980, and it has a new ending. Awana writes that Monroe literally refinishes the first take on the story, with an ambiguity that is characteristic of Monroe's endings, and that the author reimagines her stories throughout her work a variety of ways. Several stories were republished with considerable variation as to which content goes into which section. This can be seen, for example, in Home, The Progress of Love, What Do You Want to Know For? The Children Stay, Save the Reaper, The Bear Came Over the Mountain, Passion, The View from Castle Rock, One Walk Edge, and Deep Holes. Personal Life Monroe married James Monroe in 1951. Their daughters Sheila, Catherine, and Jenny were born in 1953, 1955, and 1957 respectively. Catherine died 15 hours after birth. In 1963, the Munros moved to Victoria where they opened Munros Books, a popular bookstore still in business. In 1966, their daughter Andrea was born. Alice and James Munro divorced in 1972. Monroe returned to Ontario to become writer-in-residence at the University of Western Ontario, and in 1976 received an honorary LLD from the institution. In 1976, she married General Fremlin, a cartographer and geographer she met in her university days. The couple moved to a farm outside Clinton, Ontario, and later to a house in Clinton, where Fremlin died on April 17, 2013, aged 88. Monroe and Fremlin also owned a home in Comox, British Columbia. At a Toronto appearance in October 2009, Monroe indicated that she had received treatment for cancer and for a heart condition requiring coronary artery bypass surgery. In 2002, her daughter Sheila Monroe published a childhood memoir, Lives of Mothers and Daughters, Growing Up with Alice Monroe.